Hello interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, welcome to 2022. Um, first recording on the first day of my reopening this year. The workshop is a bomb site, and I haven't released a video in a fortnight. Uh, like, that's two weeks, not the game. It's a word. Anyway, um, and um, I, all of my stuff in the queue is fairly boring assembly jobs that I'm just like, ah, kind of want to come back with something a bit more interesting than that. Um, so this no post came in this morning. Uh, we've got a custom build here. Uh, it's a Corsair carbide something case. I can't remember which one it is. Um, and we've got a ROG Maxima 7 motherboard here. So this is Z97. So this is um, fourth gen refresh. Um, so nice motherboard. I assume there's a nice CPU in there, although it's got a horrible little stock Intel blower on it. So it might be an i5. I hope it's not an i5. And we've got a fairly big looking graphics card that I'm guessing is um, maybe a 980 Ti or it might be a 780. Um, or it could be a uh, or it could be a Radeon 280X or something like that. I don't think so though. Um, I'm thinking it's a 780 or a 980 or something like that is my guess. Uh, there there isn't a label on the back of it to tell me which, so I don't know yet. Um, it's got 16 gigs of DDR3 in it, a couple of hard drives and an SSD, and I have already checked and no, it does not post. So first of all, uh, let's turn it on and do a visual inspection just so we can confirm the no post oh, and see if we can spot anything. So how do we deal with a computer that does not post? Um, so firstly we turn it on and we reproduce the fault and we confirm that the information that we've been given by the customer is accurate. I need to move this camera. So um, we're getting some information for free from this motherboard. Uh, this motherboard has got a postcode reader up in the top right corner here. That's currently sitting on 26. I don't know what 26 is off the top of my head, but we can look up the manual or just a postcode table for this motherboard to find out what error 26 is. Um, however, before we actually go to the effort of doing that, there's some low hanging fruit that we can go for. So I'm always gonna do that first. There's plenty of people that will be like, oh, that's error, whatever. And oh, you can look that up. And it's like, yes. However, also there's a lot of simple stuff that I can do first for free that doesn't require me to think. Um, as Lewis Rossman would put it, sometimes you don't have to use your brain. So don't fire up your brain if you don't need to. Let's do the easy stuff first. So uh, visual inspection. Let's turn it off for a sec because we can see it doesn't start. What can we see about this computer? So firstly... We've got uh, an 8-pin EPS connector that's not plugged in properly. I had not actually spotted that until now. So this is not connected properly. That might be our problem. CPU might be getting no power. Um, theoretically, 4-pin um, will probably be enough, uh, and it should be the left 4-pins that is connected for a 4-pin setup. However, I would expect this to work. It's incorrect, but I would expect it to work. Um, We've got, got some fans plugged in. Those are okay. CPU fan connector is pretty wonky, but it is plugged in. That won't stop post. If the CPU fan is not connected, you might get errors. It might You might get a no fan detected, but it's not going to stop it from posting. Uh, let's see. The ATX connector is not really in properly either actually there's a lot wrong with this i wonder if the customer or someone else has already been looking at this and they've tried unplugging and plugging things in and they haven't really connected everything properly because they weren't sure or something like that but the way we can t tell let's uh, get a close up on some of these so firstly there's our there's our eps connector not connected properly down here we've got the atx connector so the two giveaways is Number one, we can see that the plus four is not in properly. Um, there's actually a gap there. I don't think we're focused properly, but you get the idea. The other giveaway is I can use my fingernail and I can get my fingernail between the plug and the connector. And if I can get my fingernail in there, it's not in. Um, now, there are some connectors that are really, really stiff and it's very, very difficult to get it all the way down. Um, if you can fit your fingernail in there, it's not in. Just, you know. 
this might not be it, but if that's it, then it kind of proves my point. Um, what else can we see? The graphics card is it's dusty on top, but it's in properly. It's got power. Um, this is a daisy chained power connector. Um, these days, this is uh, this is not this is considered no not cool. Ideally, you should have two power cables going to your graphics card, especially if you've actually got it available like we do here. We've got another PCI Express connector here that, and it's just hanging out. There's no reason not to be using this. However, this will work in all but the most extreme cases. Lots of people will go, oh, you can't do that. You can. You absolutely can. Unless you have some terrible tin box power supply anyway. Um, so again, that's something that is, you know, I will change it, but I don't think that's our problem. What about down here? Uh, we've got more fans. Our front panel connectors are correct, but unconventional. However, this is a um, older Asus motherboard and Asus were one of those horrible brands who used a weird layout for the front panel connector. And Asus are the reason, basically boards like this are the reason why this connector still isn't standardized even though it's the same on 95% of computers. Uh, there are still some oddball motherboards like this asshole who did not follow the standard that everyone else was using. Um, so this, uh, the eagle-eyed might go, oh, that doesn't look correct. It's fine for this motherboard. Um, that's it. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to reseat all of these power connectors. Actually, I'll do it one by one, just in case, just so we can narrow down which one it is if it is one of them. So I'm going to unplug this back fan and I'm going to unplug the ATX connector and make sure that is seated properly. I'm just going to look in there and make sure there's no bent pins or anything like that. No, that looks good. I would expect to have no power at all or a quarter fan spin. Ugh if uh, this was the issue. And by quarter fan spin, I mean the fans twitch for a quarter of a second. So literally your CPU fan will go, Ugh, and that's it, It go and it dies again. That's what I'd expect if it was this connector or just stone dead. Right, I plug that back in. I can't get my fingernail between those connectors now. I can just scrape up and down. So that is now in properly. Let's try it again. Power on, power on. This is doing weird things just simply because it's cold at first and it doesn't immediately turn on. That fan behavior is nothing. That doesn't mean anything. We've landed on code 26 again. Same deal. All right, so that wasn't it. So let's do the CPU power connector as well. Um, then after that, I'm going to do a BIOS reset. And if we still don't get anything, then we're going to look up a code 26 and find out what that is. I'm going to sort out this fan cable as well because it's upsetting me. I'll twist this up. Eh. And then, because I've twisted it, it will now lay flat against the motherboard. Hello. Hello, hello. That's just not on. Uh, well, okay. Now we've got to. T now we have to take that off. Oh, oh my, oh my word! That's never been on properly. Like that's stock. That's the stock application of the paste. This thing has never had proper cooling. This computer is, this computer must be six or eight years old. It's probably been throttling its whole life. What the hell? W okay. This is why it's fun to do the discovery before you've looked at a computer. <laughs> let's, let's just put this CPU cooler on properly. Sometimes it's a bit embarrassing to find something like this when you've already turned the computer on, but 
Um, and a lot of people go sort of, oh, why didn't you do that before you turn the computer on? You need to remember the customer has already tried to turn on the computer. The reason why I check to see what a computer does b before I look at it is generally because the customer has already tried to turn it on. And the other thing as well is like, like I just said, this computer is, this is, this is um, fourth gen Intel. This is like 2014, this computer. So, and that must have been like it its whole life. It's nuts. It's an i5-4570. So this, this chip doesn't produce a lot of heat, which is probably why they got away with it. But at the same time, it's probably been throttling like nothing else on Earth as well. Okay, so what has happened here is um, the Intel stock blower with these push pins. Um, uh, these push pins are very difficult when you don't understand how they work. Um, they're a very cheap mounting solution. They work, but everyone hates them. Um, so yeah, uh, so how it works is if you look at the top of the push pin, uh, you can see there's an arrow there. So when the when they are rotated anti-clockwise as they are now, these are in the reset position. So what we do, we rotate them clockwise by 90 degrees. So it's in the right hand position. And then when it's in a motherboard, we poke the clear part through the motherboard holes. And then we, when we push down on the push pin, it clicks into place and that push pin goes through and prevents this from pulling out of the board. And this won't lift up, it's locked into position now. Now, if I rotate it 90 degrees anti-clockwise, so it's back into the reset position, we can now lift it up. And now this will pull out of the motherboard. So what happened was all of these push pins were in the reset position. Now these are fairly misleading because the arrows point inwards. So by logical conclusion, you might look at that and go, well, they're supposed to be in that direction. That's do up, that's engage, right? No, it's the opposite. Those arrows point toward the unlock position, which is actually really dumb. And it's one of the reasons why I hate these push pin coolers. But so, you know, we can look at this and we can sneer and we can laugh at the person who built it and go, what an idiot, you know. However, this is a terrible design. There's no other way of putting it. So if you're a, if you're a first time builder, this is the kind of thing that happens, unfortunately. So let's stick stick this guy back on. Um, but when I'm done, we'll put new paste on this because this paste is, yeah, that's oh, that's actually solid. That's actually worthless. No, I can't actually use that at all. I was going to reuse this thermal paste because I was going to take it off again at some point anyway. But this thermal paste is solid as a rock. So uh, let's get some. I'm going to spray some alcohol onto that and wipe it off. I probably could have just chipped this off, actually. Right, uh, since I don't want to put the CPU cooler on and off several times, I'll inspect the CPU while I'm here. I want to test it with this thing. We've kind of gone off the rails of how to test for a no post at the moment, but that's how it be. Um, I'm going to check, I'm going to inspect the CPU um, just so I don't have to take the cooler back off. So we'll unlock that. Let's take this guy out and have a look. So I've no reason to believe there's going to be any problems down here because this computer has been working up until the point where it didn't work. Mercifully. Unfortunately, there is a very, very strong chance that this CPU is toast because it's basically been running with no cooling. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I, my mind is is reeling with how this computer has worked up until now. And I need to say to the customer, did you guys change the CPU cooler recently? You know, like was a was a an aftermarket cooler removed and then someone just bolted this one on and it's only been on for a week or something? Because I'm like, it can't have been like this from build. Surely not. It can't have been like this from build. Like I've got a uh, I've got a, um, a diagnostic video where I was working on a uh, an FX four or an FX six where the um, it had a stock blower on and the fan for the blower was trapped un underneath the cooler 
uh, like that. So it was going under the cooler, between the CPU and the cooler, and then into the plug. And when I took it off, the, fat, the, the cable was smushed into there. And that was one of the more mind-blowing things I'd seen. But for that, you could understand it because it had been squashed flat and there was thermal paste across it. So there was some heat transfer th um, to the cooler. But, I mean, you saw the, pa the pattern of the paste on there. There was no contact there apart from just a slight a, a sniff. It was leaning, you know. It may as well have been a thermal pad there for all the good it would do. Or polystyrene. Let's fit it up and start it up and hope that this CPU hasn't burnt out. I do have a fourth gen CPU kicking around. Um, I think in the worst case, uh, I have got one in the computer that's doing the recording. I would like to not have to take that out in order to test this motherboard though. Uh, that's completely the wrong pattern for this cooler. It doesn't matter. As long as there is thermal paste there, that is what matters. However, I should have done a I should have done a pea-sized dot for this. Right, let's get you back on. Back on. So all of our arrows are in the reset position. So we're going to push the push pins through the motherboard. No, oh, it's going to go kicking and screaming because they do. These are very difficult to fit in situ. Again, I'm not I'm not going to sneer at the customer for not having this on properly because I hate these things so much. I might just take the graphics card out actually just so I've got more room to work because this one feels really nasty going on. Ugh. Ah, 970. Ah, triple a uh, triple blower 970. Fair enough. This is still a respectable computer. There we go. Right, all of my push pins are now through the motherboard. I just got a nice click out of there. Okay, so now we're going to turn all the pins, uh, all the, uh, well, yeah, all the push pins clockwise to the uh, armed position and now we go click and I'm just keeping pressure on the top of the cooler so the so it can't pop out from the motherboard click 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 there we go and now that is rock solid on there I could lift up the computer by that if I wanted to so Horrible design, but it is it it is secure. Like I said, this would bear the weight of the computer. Don't lift it up by it, but that's that's me trying to portray the fact that as janky as those look, they do function. Right, where was I? I was making this cable look tidy because that's absolutely the most important part of this video right now. Okay, right, that's refitted. Let's plug our EPS cable back in. Then, um, uh, shall I put? I won't put the graphics card in yet. We'll just fire it up and see what it does. I think the CPU is cooked, and there's probably a bunch of people who are already commenting before the end of the video, going, "Code twenty six is no CPU." And if it is, then that's what we'll find. Right, I'm going to plug into the onboard graphics. Power on, power on. That's code 26 again. That's fine, that's fine. In terms of actually progressing the no post, we haven't actually changed. All we've done is just made sure that this is ah. All we've done is made sure that this guy is in properly now. And I said earlier on that I don't think that's our problem. So, fine. Okay, let's go back to the no-post diagnostics. So, the camera has slowly been wandering through the video. I don't use the camera... I don't use the camera at this angle very often. Stay put. All right. Where was I? Okay, right. So, we're still on a code 26. We're still in a no-post. Let's go back to diagnostics. So... 
we've done our visual inspection, we've resolved all of the cable anomalies that we could see and all the other um, uh, all of the other visual inspection issues, cooler wasn't on properly, stuff like that. That has not helped us. So let's turn it off and we're going to reset the BIOS. There's half a dozen ways of doing this and everyone can argue about which is the best. Uh, this motherboard does actually have a clear CMOS button down here, which is probably the easiest way to do it on this one. However, I'll demonstrate the way that works on every motherboard, and that is to pop out the battery. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to pop this guy out. And while we're here, I'll just get the multimeter and just see if, if the battery is gone as well. A flat battery probably won't block post in the vast majority of cases, but it's, uh, it's an indicator into the health of the motherboard. Oh, that's toast, yeah. That's not helping our case. So this 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 battery, nominal is 3 volts, um, full is 3.3. Basically, we want it to be 3 or above, realistically. So 1.5, that's completely cactus. That's, that's brown bread. So I've got a new battery here. We'll stick that in in a sec. I'm going to leave this out for, uh, I don't know, a couple of minutes. I'm going to go get a coffee while I wait. Usually like 30 seconds a minute is enough, um, but I'm just going to go and make a coffee just for good measure. Boop. All right, let's run it again. Power on the back, power on the front. That's just gone straight back to code 26. We need to know what code 26 is. I've done the low hanging fruit. I've done the, the quick ones. Now it's time to actually go, right, what is the motherboard telling me? Like I say, you don't necessarily have to jump straight into researching codes and diagnostic LEDs. There's lots of just basic things you can do at a quick glance. Any one of those could have been successful and in which case we would have been like, there we go, now I didn't have to do any Googling at all. However, there comes a time when you have to say, no, let's actually look at what the board is trying to tell me. Oh, how about that? Code 26 is uh, memory training. And uh, RAM is the one thing that I didn't take out and put back in again. Um, but oddly enough, it was the one thing which didn't visually look like there was anything wrong with it. Uh, fine, okay, let's turn it off again. And let's take a look at the memory. So these Asus motherboards, uh, one of the things that I really dislike about Asus motherboards is they have this single point hole, uh, these single hold down um, dim slots where only one end of the slot latches. And that makes it very difficult to seat memory properly. Um, you know, I'm not saying that I, I do like Asus motherboards, don't get me wrong. I use I use them in a set in many of my machines. Um, but there's there's a, there's things about them that irk me still today. Um, okay, visually that slot looks good. Um, you can wipe down the contacts if you want, but if there's no visible dust on there, I'll be astonished if that's your issue. So let's just take that out and put it back in again. There we go, that's gone in with a nice click. And the other one. Again, visually it looks fine. Oh, it looks like a possible little something there. There's a there's a dot down there. Yeah, you can just about see that on the camera. There's something going on there. I'm just going to grab a toothbrush. And I'm just going to just gently dig in there. There we go. I have dislodged that, whatever it was. Let's put that back in. All right. Power on, what say you now? Ah, oh, that's different, that's staying on zero. Do we have a beep speaker on this? We don't. Let's just look for a uh, video output. Now we're still getting nothing out of that. However, we've got a different postcode, so, oh. Idiot.
CPU wasn't plugged in. I'd cut that bit from the video just because the more the more uh, noise that's in the video, the harder it is to learn from it. But also, just make sure you remember to plug stuff back in because that literally demonstrates that it's really easy to forget to plug stuff back in and go, oh, it's still not working. How much do you want to bet it's going to go back to code 26? Of course it is. Of course it is. I saw code zero and was like, yeah, we're cruising. So based on the fact that we've got a memory error, we have either problems with memory or the thing that we need to keep in mind is that the memory controller is built into the CPU. So this can still be a CPU fault. Um, if the memory controller is cooked, then the motherboard will report that it is trying to detect memory. Um, so this can still be a bad CPU. Now, my usual call is it's never the CPU, except when it is. However, um, this is absolutely one of those times where it absolutely can be the CPU because the CPU had no cooling. So, yeah, we have absolute grounds to believe that we may have a faulty CPU here because it had no cooling. I think I'm going to take the motherboard out of the case and we're going to start bench testing. Um, I want to start, uh, we need to get to, we're at the point now where we want to start eradicating things from the scene. Uh, I think we're going to need to put a different CPU in there and different memory in there. Um, I'll swap out the memory modules just because that's easy to do and I'm fairly certain I've got some DDR3 nearby. Here we go, here's a DDR3 stick. I'm going to lob this in here and just see what that does. I very much think it's the CPU though. Uh, let's see. Dim A2 first. Power. Power. Nope. Straight into code 26 again. It's not even trying. When we change the memory and stuff like that, it should be it should be cycling through codes. It should be going up to 26 and then resetting and power cycling and trying again. And then, you know, it may do that a couple of times and power cycle, power cycle a couple of times and then actually post. And we're not seeing any of that. It's going straight to 26 and just stopping dead. Uh, I think we have a dead C memory controller, which is in the CPU. Um, let's see. Um, I can change the CPU without taking the motherboard out. So I shall do that. I'm going to go and raid. I think, um, I think one of my other computers has a Z97 in it, um, which will have a fourth gen Intel CPU. I can't remember what's in there. There's something in there. So I'm going to go and raid that and see what I can find. Raiding successful. I've got a 4790K out of another build that I have here. Um, I didn't realize that build had a 4790K in it, actually. I thought it was a, uh, a an i5 or a 4770 or something. But the 4790K is an interesting chip because it was the fastest for this platform, which makes it a very desirable chip. Uh, it would be a really good match for this system, actually. So if it turns out to be a bad CPU, um, then we might see if Caradog is interested in parting with this. Let's pop you in there. And let's see what happens with a different CPU. Uh, right, I'm going to get a perch cooler. Just so I don't have to clamp down the uh, push pins again, I'm just going to grab this guy and just balance that on top. Now this is perfectly acceptable because 
uh, unlike the push pin cooler when we looked at it, um, while this is not uh, strapped down at all, it's being it's sitting on the CPU under its own weight. Uh, the problem with this guy is because the push pins weren't in properly, it was floating above the CPU, which is the no-no. You can get away with this for testing. However, if, there's, if the cooler is literally floating above the CPU, that's no use. Uh, so yeah, this guy is actually sitting on the CPU, which is the important bit. Power on, go. Code 26 again. I'm going to leave that for a second just to see if it sorts itself out, but I'm surprised. I genuinely thought it was going to be the CPU. It's never the CPU, except when it is, but it's never the CPU. <laughs> so um, I'm going to try another different memory module because I don't trust this one. This is just one that was sitting around on the desk and I don't recall the last time I saw this working. So I'm gonna put a different one in. Uh, this is a known good module out of the same system that this CPU just came out of. So let's stick this guy in here. All right, go again. I'd be a bit mad if my test stick was no good, but sometimes you've got to actually just double check that your test gear is also good. No, that's nothing. Uh, right, well this is looking dangerously motherboard-esque now. Um, nope, still nothing. I'm gonna do one last hurrah here. This is something I should have done a long time ago in this video. I'm gonna try a different power supply. Um, this doesn't feel like a power supply issue, but I should try a different power supply. Because if it turns out to be the power supply, I will be kicking myself for not testing that. Because in, in previous diagnostic videos, I've had the power supply out way sooner than this. So this is absolutely... The issue is, is that this computer had a lot of visual inspection problems wrong with it. Cables that weren't in properly, CPU coolers that weren't on properly, stuff like postcode readers. And the problem with that is it can lead you up the garden path. You can start chasing red herrings because you're just like, I saw a power cable that wasn't in place. I saw the CPU cooler wasn't on properly. And you start drawing, you start... Um, uh, what's the what's the term for it when you start drawing conclusions um, from, you, yeah, ev evidence to match your conclusion? Where the hell is my power? Where's the, where, I'm tired. Okay, they're over there. I found the power supplies. Go. Okay, good. No change. That's one of those bittersweet kind of tests where you're like, I'm sad that it still doesn't work, but I'm also glad that it wasn't something really obvious that I should have done two hours ago. Right, break time over. Uh, let's get this motherboard out. So, what do we know? Um, we've tried different. We've tried a different CPU. We've tried different memory. We've tried a different power supply. We've tried resetting the BIOS. Uh, we know it's not the graphics card because there isn't one in there at the moment. Uh, so at this point, we believe that we've got a bad motherboard. Um, so we have got a different motherboard we can test with. But right now, we kind of need to just get everything. We need to fully disassemble the computer to progress. So we can start swapping bits out rapidly until we get something that works. Uh, or rather, um, you know, yeah. So uh, let's take all of this out, get it all out the board, and start bench testing everything we've got to figure out what works and what doesn't. Um, so, yeah. 
This repair has been a wild ride so far. There's been so many things that I've seen and been like, oh, that's that's it. That has to be it. You know, that's clearly what is the, the problem here. And then it's like, no, that's not it. And you're just like, you're joking. What else is wrong with this thing? And how did it work for so long before not working? It, this thing must have been held together by hopes and dreams for its entire lifespan. That's neat. It's actually got active heat sinks on the um, uh, rear MOSFETs. That's a nice touch. Okay. So, I'm now going to set it up on the bench again. Um, and we'll just do the whole thing again, just to confirm that nothing has changed. And we've no reason to believe that it will work at this point, because I'm putting in all the original hardware that we started out with. I'll leave that CPU in there for a sec, because I'm going to test... This is the i5, the customer's i5. I'm going to test this in a different motherboard in a minute. And I'm going to test this RAM in another motherboard just so we can uh, confirm that the CPU and the RAM actually works. And that confirms that we have a motherboard problem. And after that, BIOS is going to be my next port of call. I think we might be going into another BIOS reprogramming fix. That's my current prediction. Nope, same thing as always. Disappointed, not surprised. Okay, that's fine. Now I'm going to take the motherboard out of the other computer. Ooh. All right. This is an Asus Tough Sabertooth Z97 Mark S. Thank you very much. Which is quite a uh, quite a unique motherboard for this era. I could talk a lot about this motherboard, about what I like and don't like about it. However, it's an interesting motherboard. Right, so I've put the customer's i5 in there. Um, I'm going to put the customer's RAM in there as well. Because at this point, we've no reason to believe there's an issue with their memory or with the CPU. So we'll just load it up and just check if it works. And if it does, we definitely know that we have a motherboard issue. Okay. Power on. And off it goes. Power cycle. See, this is doing what you'd expect a motherboard to do in this position. It's power cycling while it ram trains. There we go. And we have post. Okay. Um, signal out of range. Yeah, that's fine. Um, all right. So that's, um, uh, that's what we needed to see. So the CPU works and the RAM works. So uh, astonishingly, all of that business with the CPU not having any cooling whatsoever, complete red herring. Nothing to do with anything. Can you believe it? Um, I mean, it was still a problem and it still needs to be resolved because, you know, your CPU kind of needs cooling. That's the thing that it needs. But it wasn't what was causing the problem. <laughs> okay. Right, let's turn this off. All right, so this motherboard doesn't work. Um, let's see if we can resolve that. So I'm going to pop that chip out. Uh, this chip is socketed, so nice and easy to remove. We're going to take this out, we're going to reprogram it, and we'll see what that does for us. Right, let's have a ganders at this BIOS chip. That's a GD25B64BP chip. Um, I've seen that brand name before, but I can't remember who it is. I'm sure my programmer will figure it out. Um, so let's back up and pull that out the socket. So old board, nice and easy to remove the chip. Uh, all I've got to do is just make sure it comes out reasonably evenly, just so I don't bend the pins up. Uh, heck in. Or you can just screwdriver it out. These things are bomb-proof. Uh, he says not being able to get the chip out without it feeling awful. 
It's right up against the hecking PCH. Ugh. I need a chip remover. Imagine if I had the correct tool for the job. There we go, it's out. So, uh, half moon and the dimple indicate pin one. And that lines up with the half moon on the socket, so we know which way around it goes. Let's move the board to one side. And I'm going to drop this into my RC809F, which is my usual programmer. Um, it's... This is not my recommended programmer or otherwise, it's just the one that I have on the bench all the time. Um, I've done various videos on programmers. Um, the current, if you want to get into programming, um, and I may or may not do a bit more of a rant on that in a minute, there are cheap programmers available. Um, but, um, and the RT-809F is a weird animal because it can do monitors over HDMI and stuff like that not terribly useful for most repair shop environments um, but at any rate uh, my point is this is the one i'm using it's a good programmer i like it um, but uh, if you're looking to get into this there are probably other recommendations i would make ch 341 a or something like that i've actually got a newer version of the ch 341 a uh, so it's a version 1.6 this guy has a voltage selector switch on it which is very cool uh, I haven't taken this out of the bag yet. I've got it over the Christmas holidays. I'm quite excited to have a look at that because that might be like that might be a this is a perfect starter programmer kind of thing. But we'll get back to it anyway. Uh, because this is a dip um, chip, I can just drop this straight into the socket there. No need for any soldering or adapters. Uh, this will be a 3.3 volt chip. I don't need to bother looking it up to check. Uh, let's take a read of it and see what we get. And I shall do a smart identify. Right. Uh, what did I say this was? A GD25B64. You sure about that? The hell is a 25B? Yeah, we've got loads of 25 Qs. That makes sense. What if I searched for GD25B? Oh, there we go. Be careful with auto-detect, peeps. It can lead you up the garden path. 64B. There we go. That'll do. Give me that. Read. Chip ID does not match. Oh, okay. I will abort and just see if I can find a better match. Whatever, let's just read it and see if that does the job. Ignore. All right, verified. Save it. All right. So we've got a backup dump. Let's go get a new BIOS for this. So Asus Maximus. Seven, awesome firmware. There we go. Beta version. Uh, I would prefer not. Let's get the latest non-beta version. What's the date on that? 2015, 2018. Hmm. The beta BIOS probably has an updated interface um, that more closely matches a modern BIOS. Um, however, beta BIOSes really sketchy sometimes they're fine but when they're not fine they're not fine so um if you were messing around and we were going back and forth between versions and stuff um i would probably try it on a working system and just see if it's any good however we're trying to make this motherboard work so i'm going to get the latest stable so asus bios is download as a cap file um and Cap files are not necessarily the same as a bin or DAT. Um, I is something is to do with the header information in the file. Uh, now my RT809F software will automatically convert cap files for programming, so I don't need to do anything here. I don't know if other software can do the same or not. Uh, because I, I haven't uh, I haven't read and learned enough about exactly what a cap file is. Uh, if anyone wants to write an essay in the comments, you're more than welcome to do so. In the meantime, 
I'm going to capitalize on the fact that I have got a programmer that will just automatically deal with this. There we go, cap format virus is detected, the conversion is complete. I don't think it's very complicated at all. As I say, I think it's to do with the header information, um, but either way, that's that. Right, let's program it. Right, and I'm gonna ignore this again. I am confident that we can continue. Okay, programming is complete. So hopefully we should find that that is all hunky-dory now. So we'll pop that out, the programmer. And put that back in the motherboard. Pin one down. And I'll put the customer's RAM and CPU back in this thing now because we know that that all works. That's my i7. Right. Standby power on. Start. That's it. It's past 26. All right, I forgot to plug in a... I forgot to plug in um, uh, HDMI and stuff. However, it's power cycling. It's doing all the things it's supposed to. Ugh. Show me a signal. There's a beep, and there's a post screen, and signal out of range. Uh, I need to change to a different um, uh, capture card. Uh, let me just plug in my emergency one. There we go, emergency dirty capture. Uh, oh, there we go, that's quite a modern looking BIOS actually. That's all right, good. Right, this motherboard is repaired. Uh, so, what was wrong with it? Um, this is almost certainly um, a phenomenon uh, that is known as bit rot. Um, and I don't know much about the technical the technicalities behind bit rot, but it's it's generally known as bit rot where the contents of the BIOS become it, I mean it wasn't corrupted by settings per se because we did like a couple of resets on it but bits get flipped in the chip because it's an old chip, basically. Um, so there are different possibilities. I've seen this a couple of times. You reprogram the chip and bam, the motherboard comes back to life uh, and it's hunky-dory. Um, some people may experience that it lasts for a bit and then the same thing happens and that means that the chip is just dying and it's just not holding its contents. Um, but um, either way, I don't know the technical reasons behind it. However, manually reprogramming the BIOS has sorted it. On a motherboard that has BIOS flashback, you can stick your BIOS file onto a flash drive, plug that in, push a button, and it will program the BIOS from the file stored on the flash drive. Uh, a lot of modern BIOSes, a lot of modern motherboards have this. Um, on, the, on older motherboards, it was reserved only for very high-end motherboards. Newer stuff, it's quite common on mid-range boards, um, but BIOS flashback is not always a sure thing either. Um, again, I don't know the reasons why, but just, you know, it works a lot of the time, but not all of the time. So for modern applications, it's entirely possible that you've got BIOS flashback available to you, uh, and that may enable you to recover a board in this condition without needing to program the chip like I did. However, um, computer repair shops pay attention if you have not started looking into how to do BIOS programming I cannot recommend it enough um, I get I mean I don't want to say that I get a lot of wins but when you're starting to get, get into the realms of you know motherboard repair and stuff like that a BIOS programmer is a very very powerful tool to have in your inventory because you can recover a lot of stuff 
Um, and you may need to desolder the BIOS chip from the motherboard, but that's easy mode when you're getting into doing hot air rework and stuff like that. So if you want to start getting into board level repair, um, le learning BIOS programming, even in the most basic form that I've just demonstrated, very, very powerful place to start. Highly recommend it. Right, I'm going to get this computer rebuilt. Uh, I'm going to put it back together, make the cables look nice, and uh, we'll be back with a working machine. So another case of a BIOS fix did the job there. Um, I'm quite. This was quite an interesting adventure. There was a lot of red herrings here, which led us on various garden paths, all of which turned out to be not the problem whatsoever. So uh, kind of interesting. Um, and again, notice how I was ignoring the postcode error at the start because I was like, no, we'll take the low-hanging fruit. And uh, you know, in the end, I was like, fine, we'll read the error. And hey-ho, the error was nothing to do with it. So uh, do observe what information the computer is giving you, but take everything with a pinch of salt. And remember, be systematic. As always, my support links are down in the description below for um, Patreon, Discord, Twitter, um, and Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, and that's it. See you next time. Bye.